Today's youth are tomorrow's leaders. Do now what you want to do tomorrow. You are not a teenager, you are a Christian. God's looking for is somebody who's going to believe and obey His word and trust Him and do what He says. Remember your Creator in the days of your And let no one look down upon you just because you are young. You can overcome the world. We have heard that today's youth as tomorrow's leaders. But I have a question. What about the days of your youth? You know, the world wants us to live it up while we have time, while we are young. You know, the world wants us to enjoy everything that the world offers us. But if we look into the Bible, King Solomon, the wisest man, you know, he writes, he says, Remember now thy God in the days of your youth. Solomon Raza hath also borrowed and sang that he tuja rotsnarak tuja tonna tacha disani ugra score. If you see this King Solomon, he speaks exactly the opposite of what the world tells us. He could easily say, you know, you can enjoy now, you will have an opportunity as you grow older. But no, he says, remember now thy the creator in the days of your youth. And I want to tell you something. I was touched when I was a youth and loving Jesus and serving him has been the best part of my life. So today we have with us couple, we have with us pastor who work among the youth. We have a youth pastor and uh, I believe that they are with us today as they are going to share with us something about Christian young so let me introduce you all to them. We have with us Pastor Kyle and uh, Sister Audrey. We are blessed to have them with us. Praise and a uh, warm welcome. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yes. It's great so, to be here. Yeah. So the first thing that I want to ask you all, you know, Pastor Kyle and uh, Sister Audrey was touched they were saved at the age of 15 years and uh, they are married for the last one year and uh, let's get together with them and let's hear what they exactly has to tell us about Christian young teens. So to begin with pastor, let's get to the basic, the foundation. The first question what I would want to ask you all is what is the gospel? Okay. So out, of, out of all the questions I think that we have today, this is probably the most important question is, is what exactly is the gospel? And we could ask that question to a lot of different people and we could get a lot of different answers because, I mean, it depends on if you ask one group or one religion or one denomination, you might get a different answers from each different group. So that's why it's important to see what God says the gospel is and, and to go to the Bible and see what God said in his word. What is the gospel? Uh, the first thing the Bible says the gospel is in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. It says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So we know from the Bible that the gospel is what saves a soul. The gospel is what imparts salvation to a sinner. When I got saved at 15 years old, it's because I believed the gospel. Uh, so what exactly is the gospel? Well, again, the Bible answers that question. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible says the gospel is that Christ died for our, on, or died, Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. And according to the Bible, that is what the gospel is. Um, the Bible says in another spot, if, if somebody preaches, and it's in Galatians, uh, the Bible says if anybody preaches any other gospel, if even an angel came down from heaven and taught a different gospel than what the Bible says, the Bible says, let them be accursed. So if somebody were to add anything to the gospel, anything besides Jesus dying, uh, being buried for three days and three nights and rising from the dead, anything else is not part of the gospel. 
According to the Bible, the gospel which can save a sinner is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the only gospel and the only thing that can save you from your sins. Okay, what, what exactly makes you all so passionate about Jesus? And uh, who is, in, in simple words, who is Jesus to you all? What makes you all passionate, you know, to serve him, to love him, to believe in him, to follow him? Okay, I, I'll, I'll answer those two questions kind of at the same time. Jesus to me is my savior. Jesus is my God and, and the one who died on the cross for my sins to give me everlasting life. And that's what makes me passionate about serving him. That's why I want to live for him. That's why I want to be a Christian. That's why I want to live right. When you look at everything Jesus Christ did for you, it makes, what else would you want to be passionate about? Because no one else can do for you what, what Jesus has done for you. Um, the Bible says in, in Romans chapter 12 that serving Jesus Christ is your reasonable service. It only makes sense, it's only reasonable that you'd be passionate about Jesus uh, after you see what he did for you. Yes. What about you, sister? You have got to say something? I would say it would be the same thing. I feel like I owe that to him. I feel like that is what I need to do for him. It's the least that I could do. You know, he died on the cross to save anyone who believes. He saved me. And I feel like that's the least that I could do for him is to serve him with my whole life. So that's why I'm passionate about that. Since y'all y'all work with the youth, okay, mm -hmm. you're a youth pastor and you'll, you work among the youth. How did you come to know about this call over your life? And how was it confirmed? How did you get into this? Okay, that's a, that's a really good question because there's, there's lots of confusion about uh, what God wants you to do with your life. So I'll tell you what happened to me. I got saved and like I said, I wanted to serve Jesus. Uh, I wanted to do something for him. And there was a time in my life that I, I really felt like the Lord wanted me to serve him um, on a larger capacity, not just doing little things, but to do as much as I possibly could for him. So I went to Bible school and, and, and I studied the Bible and I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to do something. And in Bible school, I learned this truth that, that is a little bit different than what most people teach, but I think it's true according to the Bible. Most people sit and wait for God to call them to do something. But God is looking for somebody who is going to say, Lord, I'm willing, will you please call me? Most people don't do anything until God comes and says, hey, I want you to do this. But you can, in a way, you can call God. You can call God and say, I would like to do something for you. Would you allow me to do that? And that's what I did. I, I asked the Lord, I said, I want to serve you. I want to do something for you. I would like to be in the ministry. I'd like to be a pastor or a youth pastor or a missionary. Will you please give me an opportunity to do that? Um, and in the meantime, I didn't sit around and do nothing. In the meantime, I tried to work hard to study my Bible so that if the Lord did call me, I'd be ready. And I worked hard to try to witness so if the Lord did call me, I'd already be a witness. And so then when the Lord gave me this opportunity, uh, we, we lived in Florida at the time, a state in the United States, and he gave us the opportunity to move to North Carolina and minister there. Uh, that was my confirmation that he'd given me that opportunity. Praise God. See, first, first step was that you all were saved. Right. You yes. got saved. Okay. Yes. But you do not stop there. Exactly. Right. That's very important. That's yes. exactly right. Okay. But you went forward and you, you, you wanted to do something for the Lord. Right. Okay. So we, we might be having right now teens, Christian teens, or maybe parents for that matter, viewers okay. who are watching, and they must have been stuck there. They believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. They are saved. They must be stuck there. Now what? So what would you want to tell them? I would tell, especially a Christian young person, I would tell them to start doing the things that they would like to be doing in the future. If you want to be a pastor, start studying the Bible and writing sermons. If you want to be a missionary, 
Start witnessing to people. God is not going to let you be a missionary or a pastor if you're not doing that job now. So do as much as you can for the Lord right now where you are, and the Lord will increase your opportunity to do more for Him. A lot of people think, you know, you can't write a sermon until you're a pastor, and that's, that's not the case. There's lots of uh, opportunities to preach and tell other people about Jesus and witness. Um, so those are things you can start. You don't have to be a pastor to be in Bible school. You can find a Bible school or, or you can go on, on, online. There's lots and lots of opportunity online to learn the scripture. Um, and, and those are good opportunities. Start learning those things and studying those things and, and working as hard as you possibly can in those things. And, and the Lord, if, if, if you are a faithful servant, the Lord will use you. Amen. Yes. Once, once you lead youth to Christ, how do you all disciple them? And what are the difficulties you all face while discipling the youth? Sure. We, in, in our specific situation, most of the youth that we work with have been in church all their lives. So they know a lot of the basics. They know a lot of the fundamentals and the basic truths of the Bible. And so our discipleship mainly consists of teaching them uh, in Sunday school. And then we do a lot of activities. We do a lot of, of we take trips with them and, and we're just there for them. Uh, we, we talk to them, we encourage them. If they have questions, they can ask us. We have them over to our home and just minister them and try to be friends with them and, and, and help them in their Christian walk. Um, so that's, that's the main way we do it. If somebody were to get saved that didn't have those basics and didn't have those foundations, we would, we would maybe take 20 or 30 minutes a week with them and sit down and go through those basic truths. What, what is sin? What is salvation? What is the Holy Spirit? Uh, what, what got the Trinity? What is the Trinity and how Jesus, got, uh, the Father, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Go through some of those basic truths and teach them what those mean and what they mean to them and encourage them to, to live those truths. The difficulties you face in discipleship with teens is really the same difficulties you, you would face with adults. And it's that once you get started, they lose interest and decide, I, you know, they get saved, but they don't want to live for the Lord. Discipleship is, is a two-way street. It's, it's, I can teach you everything I know about the Bible and I can teach you what you need to know to live the Christian life. But if you don't take that and apply it to your life and try to live that way, there's, I can't make you live right. So that's the greatest difficulty with dealing with any discipleship, but especially young people is distractions saying, you know, I got saved, I, wanted, I didn't want to go to hell, so I trusted Jesus, but I don't really want to live right. So that's, that would probably be what we come across as the main, main, dist or main uh, 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 issue when, when discipling. So how, how will you uh, guide them in this area, like you just said, um, they believed in Jesus because mm -hmm. they want to escape hell. Right. They don't want to go to hell. Sure. Okay. So they took a better opportunity believing in Jesus and going to heaven. But they don't want to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Mm -hmm. This has been, I believe, a great struggle, a great difficulty a young teen faces in his or her life. So how will you uh, address it to them and how will you encourage them to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord? What I would say is why a lot of teens don't live that uh, pleasing life to the Lord is because a lot of churches have stopped teaching them the Bible. And we have made, see what pastors and churches have done is we've made an unbiblical distinction between young people and adults. And when we talk to young people, we teach them the same three or four truths over and over and over and over again but we never go on to those deeper truths in the scripture until they're older. And those deeper truths in the scripture are very, very interesting and very, very fascinating. And I think what would keep a lot of young people in church is if they really, really studied their Bible and fell in love with the Word of God. Um, and we, we taught them everything in the scripture. That's one thing. The other thing is what we do is we try to make serving Jesus look like the most exciting thing in the world because it is the most exciting thing in the world. We, we don't want to make it look like we're serving Jesus because we have to and we're so bored and we don't want to be in church. And we, Jesus changed my life and made my life so much better. And I try to show them that and that they can have that too if they'll live for the Lord. 
Sometimes we paint the picture to look like, you know, yeah, the world is so fun, but if you want to please God, you have to sit in church and be bored. <laughs> and that's not the case. That's not Christianity. The Bible says the world has pleasure for a season, but living for Jesus is the best life you could possibly live. And it's the most exciting life you could possibly live. And so we don't fool our young people. We don't tell them that there's no fun out in the world because you could go out into the world and you could have some fun, but it's going to hurt you in the end. You can stay in church and live for Jesus and have, have, have a, such a better time living for Christ, so much more excited. I live in the America. If I didn't live for Jesus, I would never get to come to India. I would never get to go around the world and tell people about Jesus and meet the people I'm, I've met. I would be living a life of sin and a life of sadness and, and, and I could have some fun out in the world, but it wouldn't be the fulfilling life that I have in Christ. Yes. What are the biggest struggles or difficulties faced by the teens today? I think probably in a, in a general sense would be worldliness. A teenager goes, goes out and they go to school or they go with their phones and the internet and wherever they look with signs on the side of the road there's advertisements and a, pr a promoting worldliness. You need to be like the world, you need to be like this, you need to be like that, you, you, you need to live in such a way and portray yourself in such a way that is worldly. And that really, really has an effect uh, on young people especially, is just the constant barrage of, of it's really honestly uh, uh, media, the, the day we live in. It, it didn't used to be that, that people had all the troubles they do now with worldliness. But with that cell phone or that computer or that, that TV, you've got access to a lot of good things, but you also have access to a lot of bad things. And so that's a, that's a big problem um, in, in, our, in, in, in teenagers nowadays. Um, the other thing that's important to remember, though, is the Bible says that there is no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. And I would say to the parents especially, the temptations that are after your young people are the same temptations that are after you. And the same thing that tempts a teenager is the same thing that tempts me or tempts you. And again, we, we tend to think of an adult and a teen as these totally different uh, creatures, but they're the same in a lot of ways. And I, it would be insightful for a parent to remember the things that tempt you are the same things that tempt them. And you can share your experience in dealing with those temptations and you can help that because you've, you've been through it before. The reason why teenagers seem to be um, drawn away by temptation more than older people or adults is because the adults have been through it before. They've been there, they've done that, they've seen that, they see where it ends and they know they don't want that. A teenager's never experienced that before. So they see that worldliness or they see that alcohol or those drugs or the immorality and they don't know what that's like. And so they say, I'm going to try it and see what it's like. And they try it and it hurts them. And hopefully they come back to church and back to God and they don't want to go out there. And now they're the adults with the experience. <laughs> so what adults need to do is understand that the temptations that are after their young people are the same ones that were after them and are after them and share that experience and share that knowledge and share that training that they've had by going through life with those young people and help them to stay out of that. Um, and again, it's, it's also getting them excited about this Bible and, and getting them excited about the Lord and showing them how important, how wonderful this is. And the conclusion that we try to get our young people to come to is, why would you go out there when you've got everything in here? Yes. And why would you want to be a worldly person when you could be a Christian? Yes. Um, other areas that, that, I'm trying to think of some areas that are maybe less common that people don't think about. Um, one area, at least in, in America, at least where we live, is time. We take all of our young people's time away on things that we, we think are good and oftentimes they are good, but the average teenager will go to school all day and school's a good thing. You should go to school, you should learn. But then they get out of school and then they've got four hours of sports and sports are a good thing. It's good to be healthy and to exercise, right? And then they come home and they've got homework and that's a good thing. They need to learn. But we give all those, our teenagers, all those things and they don't have any time left for God. 
and they don't have any time left to study and to learn the Bible or to pray. They don't have any time to witness. And we have convinced our young people that that's okay because they're young people. When you're a teenager, this is what you do. And then when you get older, you can be an adult and you can study these things. And that's, that's really, really backwards. And I don't, I don't know exactly what the solution to that is because they need to learn and they need to be healthy and all those things are important, but there's an improper balance. Yes. We've put those things way up here in the Bible way down here and we need to, we need to balance that thing out. Yes. How will you all encourage a young teen to keep the fire burning in them? This is what, this is what we tell our teenagers. Um, what we tell our teenagers is you need to remember that you, you are not a teenager, you are a Christian. The world, I'll explain that. The world will tell you because you're a teenager, you don't need to worry about witnessing. And some churches will tell you because you are a teenager, you don't need to worry about witnessing. The Bible tells you because you are a Christian, you do need to worry about that. A lot of churches will tell you because you're a teenager, you don't need to worry about Bible study. The Bible says it doesn't matter if you're uh, 10 years old or 110 years old. Because you are a Christian, you need to study your Bible. And so I would encourage Christian young, If let me say it this way. We go to a church, I'm a youth pastor, we, 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 we study. We preach, we go out into the community, we hold signs that have the gospel on them, we pass out tracts that have the gospel on them, we preach publicly, we do a lot of work for Jesus Christ. If I stopped doing all that work, I would become very, very cold. If I stopped doing what the Bible says is right, it doesn't matter if you're a teenager or if you're 30 or if you're 40, if you stop working for Christ, you're going to become cold and that fire is going to, to die down. You're not going to be as passionate about Jesus Christ as we once were. And what we've done is we've convinced our young people that because they're young, they don't need to do that work. And so they don't do that work and so they become cold. And so what we encourage our teenagers is don't think of yourself necessarily as a teenager. Think of yourself as a Christian because that's what you are. And this book full of instruction is, is for teenagers just as much as it is for adults. And teenagers need to read and study and believe and practice this Bible just as much as anybody else does. So that, to me, I think that's encouraging to young people to hear that you have a job to do. If you don't do your job, you're gonna get cold. And that job is found in, in God's Word. So there are a few areas which I, I, I want you to stress on because these are the areas that they struggle. Okay, point number one is uh, sexual purity, pressure and the temptations. The second one is uh, identity, self-image issues. Mm -hmm. Many of them go through this. The third one will be um, divorce or family breakdown. Uh, fourth one, negative media influence. Flush your phone down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're, the first step to identify, by negative media influence, we're talking about social media, right? Things yes. like that. We will continue with our conversation with Kyle and Audrey Hillman. And for more life transforming videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Today's youth are tomorrow's leaders. Do now what you want to do tomorrow. You are not a teenager, you are a Christian. God's looking for is somebody who's going to believe and obey His word and trust Him and do what He says. Remember your Creator in the days of your And let no one look down upon you just because you are young. You can overcome the world.